Thank you for staying tuned. This quarter, the federal government is expected to begin the process of pulling out troops in parts of the country. Now, the federal government explained that the nation is not in a war situation, and that explains its decision. In our interview segment, Mr. Mike Ejofo speaks about the implications of the decision as well as other security issues in the country. Mr. Mike Ejofo, thank you for joining us on Dateline Abuja. Thank you very much and Happy New Year. Happy New Year to you. Let's begin with this planned withdrawal of troops from some parts of the country. I mean, in one of their meetings, security chiefs in the country told us uh, they plan to begin withdrawal of troops from certain parts of the country in the first quarter of this year. That prompted a lot of reaction, expectedly, and then an explanation followed up and said it was going to happen only based on thorough assessment. Generally, what is your reaction to all this? Well, um, I was surprised when I had the announcement because initial statement was that the troops were to be withdrawn from volatile areas. And I asked, if we were drawn from volatile areas, where do you send the troops to? That account is, is, is not correct, though. But that's what, I, what we, the, the report I had all over. I was in my village during the holiday. That account then, is uh, incorrect, but all uh, the same, let, let's go uh, ahead. Now, okay, if, that, if it's not correct, that means the people who reported it did not report correctly. Uh, but the fact remains that uh, I have been in support of um, withdrawal of uh, the military in particular from uh, areas that are not volatile. Take South East, for instance. You have a floodgate of uh, military personnel all around there, and yet things are happening there. And we are talking of uh, fighting insurgency in the Northeast. You go to the Northeast, Boko Haram is on, on rampage, attacking soldiers, putting landmines and all what have you. And uh, I believe that uh, these are troops should be withdrawn and be concentrated in the north is where we will have uh, very serious security challenges. Because the primary statutory responsibility of the police is maintenance of uh, internal security. But unfortunately, the police is not fully equipped to take on the challenges. So we are, we are, we are, we are in a, a quagmire. Absolutely, we are in a problem. Mr. Jeffrey, that, that's we're, a problem. So that's the quagmire. Where's we're the, the way problem. out? Uh, the, the way out is that um, the government should assist the police, equip the police to discharge its statutory functions. That's the only way to go about it. And mobilize the people to support the police. The military is not engage in maintenance of internal security, but defense of our territorial integrity, our sovereignty. And that's the way it should be. Ironically, once we had that assignment, we had some state government coming forward to say, no, it's a little bit too early. Please allow them to stay some more. Obviously, because the police over time appear to have been overwhelmed. Yeah, so we, do they stay or do they go out? No, no, no. In areas, you know, at times too, it's contradictory when you hear that uh, we've achieved success, we technically defeated uh, Boko Haram, and yet they continue to attack. So, based on the assessment, the areas they feel we have succeeded in uh, dislodging the Boko Haram insurgents, the police should be drafted in to consolidate on the gains. In our early days of growing up, you would hardly can see the military outside, but now everywhere, and we're commending the military now that collecting money as two gate. Before, when they came in, they would just see you, look at the vehicles and your pass. But now, they are being compromised. You have the, the governor of uh, uh, Burundi State openly uh, calling on the military to stop mm -hmm. collecting money. Again, all this is coming at a time when it will appear again that Boko Haram insurgents are gaining some kind of momentum, especially when you look at the recent attack on a high-ranking military officer's convoy in the northeast. So that is one of the places you're saying the military should remain, Of right? course, the military should, because this is beyond, beyond the police capacity and capabilities. The northeast in particular, the states of uh, Boronu, Taraba, you be to some extent, and uh, 
you know, the, the, it is gradually coming back. The attack was restricted to Borno before, but we are having sporadic attacks now. And before you know it, it spread it down. And my come to Abuja, coming to pre-2014-2015 uh, era that we had. The governors in the southwest are also thinking of setting up their own kind of uh, security outfit. I'm not sure what the arrangement is at the moment. We don't know what structure that is going to take, whether it will be involving regular security officials or this is done in collaboration with the government at the center. But what do you make of all this? Well, it's a very dicey situation. I watched uh, Ghani Adams, the leader of uh, OPC, the Arana Kakan for Southwest and some prominent uh, people appear on television and make statements. Um, it's good and it's bad, if not properly handled. The issue of uh, Southwest uh, Regional Security Group, as it were, that was formed by the governors of the states. Uh, it I say it's good because it gives me confidence that uh, the Southwest in Nigeria calls the choice and draws the political agenda of this country, whether we like it or not. It is the only region that you can say they are united in their cause, irrespective of their political differences. But uh, of recent, they have not been playing that role. And I believe uh, they might start playing that role now. Uh, and the way I look at it, the way I say it might be dangerous that the Inspector General of Police has not made any statement. The federal government has not made any statement on this upcoming security uh, outfit, Amuteku or whatever it is. I'm not too sure of that uh, very name. Now, if it is not checked and is badly handled, other geopolitical zones will follow suit to form their own. But if we uh, again. If you look at it critically, that secret outfit is a foundation for restructuring of this country that we have refused to carry out. As chief executive officers of their various states, do they have such powers to come together and put up this kind of arrangement without input from, say, like the police you're talking about? I expect by now there will be some sort of consultation at that level before even going ahead well, to Well, I don't think they have such powers, uh, but uh, if you look at the situation in our country too, that um, we have a situation where government seemingly has failed to provide security, which is the basic constitutional right of the people according to Section 14 to be welfare and security of the people. If the government has seen to be failed in that, people take their destiny in their hands. It's not only security. If there's no electricity, people buy generators. If there's no water, they, they do their boreholes. Now, security, you remember, is the basic foundation for any meaningful development. If there's no security, there won't be any meaningful development. So what it means now is that people want to take their destiny in their hands. And that is not very good. That's why I say it might not be good if prob uh, badly handled or that geopolitical zone can form. Because by the time they start arming themselves, maybe having confrontations with the police, that's why I'm worried. The police has not said anything about it, whether they support it or not. The federal government has not come up with any statement whether they support it or not. But I want to believe that the government, too, is trying to handle it the way Obasanjo handled uh, the issue of Sharia in uh, 1999, when uh, Zamfara state governor introduced Sharia as a state policy. And uh, Obasanjo decided to ignore ignore him because if he didn't you know we would have had some religious crisis Kidnapping. but again but uh. again this is too serious to be ignored i should expect a statement from either the police or the federal government mm. mr michael for always a pleasure to have you join us for this program thank you, thank you very much thank you Let me thank you warmly for staying with us. This is the much we've got on this week's episode of the program. But you can send your views and comments 
using the email address and Twitter handle on your screen. Also, be sure to share anything happening within your locality with us. Let me also remind you that you can view the program on youtube.com forward slash channels web slash videos. Thank you again for watching, and this is hoping you have a great week ahead. I'm Ibrahim Adra. We'll see you next week.